10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Celebrating Junior Bowling, elevating Junior Bowlers. This is Prodigy Bowlers Tour. The largest turnout of the young 2017-18 season thus far sent 18 young bowlers to the starting gate to face a two-game qualifying round on the most demanding oil pattern they've seen this season on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. The 2015 USBC Open Championships El Paso pattern. 38 feet with slightly higher than average volume. It befuddled and bewildered most of our bowlers. But then they heard the good news that of the 18 contestants, 10 would make the cut to advance to the stepladder finals. This time in a doubles format with bowlers one and two paired, three and four paired, five and six paired, and so on. So let's meet our five doubles teams. Bowling as the fifth ranked team are Christian and Nick. Christian is a two-time prodigy titleist this year, and Nick is making his second appearance in as many weeks on Prodigy. They'll face our number four ranked team of Jacob and Brandon. Jacob was on our show two weeks ago, and this is Brandon's first appearance on Prodigy this season. Of all the regulars you see on Prodigy, he had the highest finish last summer at Junior Gold. The winner of that opening match will advance to face our number three ranked doubles team, Charlie and Tyrell. Charlie is the reigning player of the year on Prodigy, having won the coveted trophy pin last season. And Tyrell is still trying to break through for his first title on Prodigy. The winner of that match will move on to face our number two ranked team, Garrett and Mark. Garrett hails from AMF Woodstock and is making his first appearance on Prodigy today. Mark just joined our league this season at Brunswick Zone Roswell and is looking for his first Prodigy title. The winner of that semifinal match will advance to face the duo that sits atop our stepladder today, Josh and Logan. Josh came to check out our Roswell Varsity League today for the first time, and in his very first game, he started with the front nine en route to a 276. And this is the third week in a row Logan has qualified in the number one position on Prodigy. He'll be trying to sign the coveted trophy pin for the second time this season. And that's our field today on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. Live on tape from Brunswick Zone Roswell in Roswell, Georgia, it's Prodigy Bowlers Tour, a series of unofficial, informal, and impromptu after-league challenge matches conducted by some of the most active and engaged youth bowlers in and around the Atlanta metro area, all in an effort to simulate the pressure of big-time tournament competition in an open-play environment. And one of the things Prodigy Bowlers Tour is best known for is mixing up the formats, which we really haven't done much of this season yet. But today, we reach deep into our bag of tricks to dust off a very old PBA format. In fact, today's format was originally invented by PBA charter member known as Mr. Bowling in the 1950s and 60s, Don Carter. If you've ever played golf in a scramble, you'll get the basic idea here. It's best ball, doubles, where each player on the team has a chance to throw a strike, and the team can choose which of the teammates' balls is used in the frame. If neither one throws a strike, they get to decide which spare to shoot. We'll explain it as we go along, and it'll all make sense. But before we begin, let's first show you how we arrived at the final 10 players today. As we mentioned, 18 kids started the day, 
And here were their scores through the two games of qualifying. Scores were pretty low. Just three of our 18 players rolled games of 200 or better in each of the two games. Tyrell and Logan threw games in the 230s to open the day, but no one got close to that the rest of the way. Dawson finished 11th, just missing the top 10 by five measly pins. Isaiah, our winner last week, was just nine pins behind him, finishing 12th. Tristan, who you've seen on our show, was just two sticks behind Isaiah. Dakota and America's favorite nine-year-old, Hunter, tied for 14th, and you see how the rest finished. We had a couple of other newcomers as both Jack and Matt came over from AMF Woodstock, and we might see them again. So let's get match one underway. It's Nick and Christian against Brandon and Jacob. The lower ranked team is leading off and they have decided to have Nick throw the first ball. The two members of the team will take turns throwing the first ball in each frame on the left lane. And this format may seem a little confusing at first, but I think everybody will get the hang of it as we go along. Nick leading off. Each frame begins on the left lane. That one goes high and he leaves a six pin, so Christian will have a chance to register a strike for the team if he can throw one on the right lane here. But no, he throws it out the window. And so the team of Nick and Christian will have to decide between these two spares which one they want to shoot. And the choice is pretty obvious here. Nick hits the reset button on lane 40 to get rid of the 13610. So they have chosen to go at the six pin. And now Nick left it, so Christian will have to shoot it. And he converts, and so the team of Nick and Christian begin with a spare. And that's how it works. Now you'll notice on the score sheet, we've put the players' names in the order that they opted to start. Nick threw the first ball in the first frame. Christian will throw the first ball in the second frame. And here on the other team, Brandon is going to throw the first ball in the odd-numbered frames. Jacob will throw the first ball in the even-numbered frames. We get our first look at Brandon this season. Now that looked like a pretty good ball right there. Could have struck. Comes in a little light. Didn't quite get the shaker. Take another look. He threw everything at it, but the seven refused to go, so Jacob will take a stab at it on the right lane. And he, too, doesn't quite get the shaker, so the team will look over their options. They can either shoot the seven pin or the two pin. Kind of six and one half dozen of the other, if you ask me. Just whichever player feels like he's got this. And it looks like Jacob is going to sit. They are hitting the reset button. That seals their choice. So Brandon will throw at the two pin, the spare that Jacob left. You only get one choice of a spare if neither player strikes. And Brandon takes care of the two pin easily. So we move back to the other team. And now Christian, who threw the second ball in the first frame, he will now throw the first ball on the left lane here in the second frame. Is this confusing enough for you? They take turns throwing the first ball, and each frame they throw the first ball on the left lane. Oh my goodness, he gets a Brooklyn, 
And that one was going away. A runaway train, that. Watch this. This ball is going to head left. It'll actually hit the left wall. But everything moves over and takes out the 10, so Nick doesn't need to throw a shot. They have a strike in the second frame. Jacob leading off in the second frame for his team, and he leaves the 1-5-7. So they'll be keeping their fingers crossed that Brandon can do a little better than that on the right lane. We expect some pretty high scores, even though this oil pattern that they're bowling on has been pretty challenging today. With both players having a shot at strikes each frame, we should see some pretty good scores. Brandon crossing over and he leaves a split. So they have a choice here between the 157 on the left lane and the 310 on the right lane and it looks like they have made their choice as Jacob has hit the reset button on the left lane he's gonna have a go at the 310 put the ball right between them and that's perfect he saves the team that frame let's take another look at that shot Goes with his plastic ball. He hooks that one a little bit, too. So now it's Nick's turn to lead off for Nick and Christian. Goes high, and he's left a cluster there. The 3, 6, 9, 10. But his partner, now up on the right lane, will have a shot at getting a strike for the team. And Christian puts that one right in the pocket for a solid strike, and we have our first double of the day. And that's what you call ham and egging it. When one player doesn't have the shot, the other guy steps up and makes the shot. If you can do that, you can string some pretty high scores. So now it'll be Brandon leading off for his team on the left lane. And that one just skidded a little too far before it finally read the back end. And Brandon has left what we call the Christmas tree. The 2-7-10. That's a split you don't see a right-hander leave very often. And Jacob crosses over. And he's got the 3-9. So, the team talks it over briefly, but there isn't much to talk over here. You get rid of the split and go for the 3-9 spare. And here's how you make it. You gotta put the ball right on the face of the three pin, or if you're hooking it, maybe on the right side and let the ball drive on through and take out the sleeper nine. Uh-oh. Well, not what he had in mind. So an open frame for Brandon and Jacob in the third, as now it's Christian's turn to start the frame for his team. Looking to extend the lead to 36 with a strike. Oh, and he threw a good one. 
So Nick and Christian take advantage of the mistake, and now it's back to Brandon and Jacob. Jacob leading off here in the fourth. And that one just gets a little too wide, and it seems to hang out there. This is one of these patterns that you're better off playing a little straighter up the boards. You try to belly it out to the right and you may not make it back. A 2 5 7 8. So Brandon will try to leave something a little easier than that or just get them all. Well, look at this. We've got baby splits on both sides of the two lanes. And I'm not sure that one is all that much easier than the other. You've got the, you see the two of them are talking it over. Which one do you want? Pick your poison here. They're not sure. You've got the two, five, seven, eight on the left lane. You've got the three, nine, 10 on the right lane. And they've, they've got a real conundrum here. Which one do you want? Let's take a look at these. Here's how I would shoot the two, five, seven, eight. Put the ball over to the right of the two. Let the ball drive through and take out the eight. And the three, nine, ten. You put the ball over to the right of the three with some hook so that it'll take out the nine and still deflect enough to take the ten. They've made their decision. I think I would have shot the other one. And that's back-to-back -back opens. And now the lead for Nick and Christian is 47, and they've got a double working. So they are in the driver's seat in this match right now. And Nick will lead off here in the fifth frame. Another one, a little too wide, doesn't make it back. He's got the two and the eight. So let's see if Christian can keep the string of strikes going for this team. Uh, no, that would be no. And you can tell these two, they quickly point to the spare that they're going to shoot. Nick left the 2-8 on the left lane, so Christian will be the one who shoots it. And he will hit the reset button on the right lane. Doesn't even want to look at that monstrosity. Oh, this is no gimme here. The 2-8, you want to hit it right on the face of the 2-pin. Or with a little hook coming in from the right. And he takes care of it. So that's a good shot by Christian. And the team of Nick and Christian remain clean through the first five frames. And it'll be Brandon leading off here in the fifth frame. For his team. First time we've seen Brandon on Prodigy Bowlers Tour this season. He made quite a few appearances last year. Was one of the three winners on the Bowl of Palooza show last year. Oh, that was a pretty good ball there. Just didn't have quite enough juice at the end to kick out the 10. Let's see if Jacob can put a strike on the board for this team. Well, that's one way. He comes in high just as the ball is starting to cross over and take another look at it. Through the nose, and look at this, the two pin coming off the wall to clean up the rest. 
We'll see his reaction here. <laughs> yeah, baby. Big smile and a big high five. So finally, a strike for Brandon and Jacob. And now Christian up on 39. Oh! <laughs> well, we're going to have to see this again. Have to see it again just to believe it. That is way out into the weeds. And here comes something off the wall. And, well, if they threw penalty flags in bowling, I'd have to throw one on that shot. You know, Jacob was so impressed with that shot, he thought he'd try it himself. But he doesn't get the favorable bounce that Christian did, so he's got the one-two up, and now it'll be up to Brandon to see if he can put a double on the board for this team. If he can strike here, he'll cut the lead to 35. But no, he goes through the nose and leaves the 3-6. So either way, they're going to have eight on the first ball. They just got to decide which of these two spares they want to shoot. The 1-2 or the 3-6. You know things are not going well for your team in best ball doubles if you're spending too much time deciding which spare to shoot. But the decision has been made, and it's going to be Brandon that shoots at the spare that Jacob left, the 1-2. I think this is the right choice. And he covers it easily. But they need strikes, not spares. As Nick up in the seventh, his team has a strike working. He can extend the lead to 55 here. But not like that. He leaves the washout, and he will keep his fingers crossed that Christian has better fortune on the right lane. He can still put a double up for the team if he strikes here. Well, Christian is getting more than his share of good breaks this game, I'd say. A crossover strike there. A runaway train, as it were. Here, we'll look at it again. He's falling off balance to the right, so he doesn't have the leverage. And watch this ball. It slams into the left wall as it strikes. Well, it's a funny game, ain't it? Another pretty good shot by Brandon that time. It just didn't quite get up. Thought he had about the right line. He may have thrown it just a touch harder, and it just didn't read. The 2 4 5. See if Jacob can get a strike. There you go. That's the best ball they've thrown this match. So, Jacob with his second strike of the match, and we'll watch it again. Playing the third arrow, gets it out to about four at the break point, and it comes back strong. But now Christian with a chance to extend this lead even further with another strike. No, no, not over there. 
That is no man's land out there. You can see when the ball gets outside about seven or eight at the break point, it is not coming back. It's like there's a little hang area out there. Let's see if Nick can find the magic spot. Well, he found a magic spot. Apparently, this team is uh, better at making Brooklyn strikes. Take another look at Nick's runaway strike here. Okay. It's not how, it's how many. And right now, the lead is 65, and they are running out of frames. Jacob goes through the nose and leaves the six pin. Well, at least that's a makeable spare. See if Brandon can put a double up for the team. He just reared up at the foul line. Looked like he was trying to give the ball a little extra lift at the bottom, and that's not the way to get the ball to react the way you want it. They're going to pass on the nine count and go with what they perceive to be an easier spare. They don't lose any count by doing that because they were working on a strike. And they cover the spare. And with a 65-pin differential between these two teams, it probably doesn't matter anyway. They're getting pretty close now to being able to just put this one away. As a matter of fact, I think Nick can do it on this ball. Oh, my goodness, he gets six. So Christian, it'll be up to him to go ahead and win the match here. If he can. Brandon and Jacob can get to 193. Nick and Christian, I think, can top that here. And with that strike, I believe that does it. Yes, indeed. Nick and Christian have won our opening match. We'll go ahead and stay with the action here and see what happens the rest of the way, but this match just got a little out of hand early. Let's watch Christian's ball here. Once again, they go Brooklyn. That seems to be the sweet spot on the right lane for these guys. Sooner or later, somebody's going to have to find the pocket. And see, Brandon got that out to that hang spot again. It just will not make the turn from there. Through the nose, the three six. You want the three six or the one two? Didn't we have this choice earlier in the match? I don't remember. Seems like we might have. In any case, it's going to be Jacob going for the one-two and covering it. Well, these players struggled throughout qualifying on this pattern. So it's not really surprising that they're spraying it a bit here. We saw that all day. There's a good ball right in the hole. So now Nick will throw the first ball in the 11th. The 10th frame works like all the other frames if Nick doesn't strike on this ball. 
Christian will have a chance to throw a strike on the right lane. That's left off his hand. A little too far left to get the strike. But they can still shoot 268 if they can get two more strikes here. Christian will try to get the one in the 11th here for his team. Uh, but no, that would not be a strike. That's the three, four, six, seven. And obviously the spare on the left is the one you would shoot. But I think since the match is already won, they're going to choose to go at the split just for fun. That's how you make it. Let's see what Nick can do with it. Well, that's a field goal. But we're not giving him three points for that. Still, it's a 250 for our winners. And now Jacob will lead off in the 10th frame for his team. They will just try to get as much as they can to save some face here. This game didn't go quite the way they had hoped. Week 10. I am surprised any time Jacob hits the pocket and it doesn't strike. He throws a lot of ball. So Brandon is going to go ahead and throw one over here on the right lane. They still have a possible 181. But he goes high and leaves a wide open split. And again, I well, I believe Jacob, he wants to shoot at the split. Doesn't really matter at this point. They've already lost the match. So, yep, he's going to go for the 410. Here's how you make it if you're going to make it. Just slide that four over into the 10. It looks easy on paper. Pretty good try. But a big win for Nick and Christian. They take care of Brandon and Jacob. And Nick and Christian will be moving on to face Charlie and Tyrell in our next match when we return. If you bowl youth league in the Atlanta metro area and would like to have Prodigy Bowlers Tour come to your local bowling center, have your youth director or general manager get in touch with me by emailing me at randy at prodigybowlerstour.com. We're looking to fill some dates this season and would love to take the show on the road to where you are. And here's some exciting news for those of you who live outside the Atlanta metro area and would like to have Prodigy come to your bowling center. We're currently working out the details of a pilot program that would enable us to have Prodigy tour cities all over the country. You've asked for it, and we hear you. It's too early to reveal the details, but stay tuned. As soon as we get this pilot program together and have ironed out the kinks, you might soon be the next host of the soon-to-come Prodigy Bowlers Satellite Tour. Keep watching Prodigy to get more details as we can reveal them. Well, we might have to change Christian's nickname from McFluffy to McLucky. He got more than his share of lucky strikes that game, but they all count as he and Nick posted a 250 to 158 victory over Brandon and Jacob. So they're moving on to match two, pitting the doubles team of Nick and Christian against Charlie and Tyrell. And you gotta figure that Charlie and Tyrell may put up a bit more of a fight. Charlie and Tyrell, good friends, and they can both bowl their butts off.
Christian and Nick have decided to flip the order. Christian's going to lead off in the odd-numbered frames this time. Buddy goes high and leaves the 3-6 here in the first frame. So it'll be up to Nick to get the team off to a fast start this game if he can. Uh, no. I believe uh, we call that throwing it off the world. Well, they're discussing it. Is there really anything to discuss here? They can't be seriously thinking about shooting at the spare on the right lane, can they? And once you hit the reset button, your decision is sealed. There you go. All right, Nick's going to go at the 3-6, the spare that Christian left. And fortunately, he was throwing plastic, and that ball doesn't hook. Because it looks like he might have missed his target left. All right. Our first look at Charlie today. He is going to lead off in the odd-numbered frames. And Charlie finds that hang spot that everybody's been struggling with. I think he's not real happy with the way that one came off his hand. It's not every day you see Charlie leave the one, two, five, nine. So it'll be up to Tyrell to get a strike in this first frame for their team. Good ball, but the 10 pin remains. And so, Charlie hits the reset on the spare he left on 39. And he will move over to the right lane and shoot what Tyrell left. The 10. He switches balls, goes to his urethane that doesn't hook much. And go cross lane, straight at it. And he throws it in the moat. Okay. All right, well, he's a little stunned by that, but we've seen some spares missed these last couple of weeks on Prodigy. Nothing surprises me anymore. So Nick leading off in the second for his team. And once again, he pulls it left and leaves the one three, six this time. So Christian will move over to the right lane and see if he can register the first strike of the match. Oh, he threw it pretty good. But the seven stubbornly refuses to go. And so I would think this would be a pretty easy choice here. Nick will move over to the right lane and shoot the seven. And they will pass on the one, three, six. No problema. So now Tyrell will lead off on the left lane. His team down by 10. And he throws a perfect strike and just stuffed it. So we're back to the odd numbered frames here. So Christian will be the one leading off on the left lane for the team of Christian and Nick. Yeah. 
Just a little light. Doesn't quite catch enough of the head pin to take out the two. So Nick will move over to the right lane, see what he can do. See if he can get the first strike of the match for his team. And another Brooklyn. These guys are having a hard time finding the pocket. But they're having remarkably good fortune hitting Brooklyn. Watch this. This time the three pin is going to go to the wall and slice out the six and ten. Parker Bone the third would be pretty proud of that strike, but I don't know about a right-hander. Well, Charlie just hasn't quite gotten locked in yet on that left lane. He's missed the head pin twice now. Not like him. But this is why it's a best ball format. You got two partners. Each one gets a shot at making a strike. Oh, oh, man. What was that? That's a trip 410. Watch this. The four and the 10 are up, and then they go out. See how he reacts to it. <laughs> All right, Nick on the left. And you can see that ball, it got into that hang zone. It just doesn't want to make it back. He's either going to have to move left or move right and play a little straighter up the boards. And Christian goes through the nose, leaves the 3, 6, 9, 10. So this will be an easy decision. Christian will shoot at the spare that Nick left. He hits the reset button on the right lane, and that seals the decision. Christian going with his spare ball for this. And he's going to have to think twice about what he's doing here. He steps back. We'll go through his routine again. And that's well done. But now, even though they started with an open, that double has closed the gap for Charlie and Tyrell. Actually, it's Tyrell who's been doing all the work so far. He has a chance to put his team up here if he can strike on this ball. But that one hooks through the nose and leaves a cluster that I'm sure they don't want to have to shoot. The 3, 6, 9, 10. So let's see if Charlie can step up and do his part. Another Brooklyn strike. It's like nobody can find the pocket. Well, Tyrell has found it a couple of times. And he gives it the left-hander's motion as if to say, yeah, if I was Earl Anthony, I'd like that strike. All right, Christian up on the left. See if he can put 10 back. 
Oh, that was a pretty good shot. He threw it maybe just a fraction too hard. And it didn't get a chance to read the back end like he'd like. But an easy spare if they have to shoot it. See if Nick can strike for the team. No. So you see Nick points at the other lane. He's not going to shoot the 138. He'll come over and shoot what Christian left. A much easier spare. He'll take his spare ball, something that doesn't hook much, and go straight at it. Oh, and it's a good thing that ball doesn't hook much. He just ticked the left side of it, but it's a spare and they remain clean. But Charlie and Tyrell with three in a row and a double working. There's a strike by Charlie on the left lane. So now that's a four bagger. And we'll watch Charlie's reaction to this one. He's like, yes, finally. After missing the head pin twice on that lane. Oh, that was a good one by Nick. He tightened up his line just a little bit, but it just didn't quite kick out the 10. Christian will try to strike for the team on the right lane. But not that way. And Nick, being a traffic cop back here, points to the left lane saying, that's the one we want. So it'll be up to Christian to shoot the 10 pin. Once again, he goes with his plastic ball. And don't adjust your set, ladies and gentlemen. Christian made a 10 pin. And now Charlie and Tyrell looking to add to this four bagger they've got working. Comes in just a little late and too light carry out the two pin so it'll be up to charlie on the right lane if you want to keep this string of strikes alive uh no yeah yeah, pretty easy decision here which one you're going to shoot at. So Charlie will move over to the left and he will shoot at the two pin, the spare that Tyrell left. And they will sweep the Greek church away. They don't even want to look at it. My goodness gracious. Well, it's a spare. There may have been just a moment of concern about that one, but he covers it. Christian and Nick need strikes. Boy, there is another 10 pin. They've thrown some pretty good balls that didn't get rewarded this game. A lot of nine counts. And another Brooklyn. And this time he trips the six. 
Watch the three pin go to the wall. And he liked that one. Charlie up on the left. And that one was perfect. Right in the pocket. So it looks like Charlie has finally measured the left lane and found something that works. And Nick will try to put a double up for his team right here. There's one. So that cuts the lead to 11. Christian and Nick are gonna try to make a game of this at the end. You heard him call for it to hook, and it did. And that's 10 back right there. So that moves the lead back to 21. So Christian and Nick need to keep striking to put some heat on Charlie and Terrell. Got to keep this going. Oh, he gave it the big loft. And you give it the big loft, that gets the ball to skid further down the lane before it reads. And that is not the way to play this pair of lanes. So it's up to Nick to keep the string going. Through the nose, and he leaves the 3-6-10. Do they want the 3 6 10 or do they want the 1 2 5 9? Yeah, they're going to reset the left lane, so it's going to be Christian going at the 3 6 10. If you watched our Prodigy shorts in the summer, you know he had a little issue with the spare. And he double dribbled it, but he managed to get it on the inside. That's not the way we draw it up. Watch this. He's going to double dribble it. But somehow it manages to hold line enough. And he's like, yeah, I'll take it. And I'm not apologizing. Charlie to put this just about out of reach. There it is. So now it's a 34 pin lead. Let's project out. Christian and Nick can finish with 214. Charlie and Tyrell may need, let's see, are they gonna need a mark? Well, let's see what Christian and Nick do first. Oh, that's wide. You can tell when they get that ball out to about the five board. At that distance down the lane, it is not coming back. That was a better line there, a little high, but he trips out the four. So now Christian will throw the first ball on the left lane here in the 11th. So they still have a possible 214. And that would give them a remote chance. Takes a moment, sets his feet carefully. That's smart. Oh, look at this. Well, he pulled that one. Pulled that one uh, clear to Athens. All right, see if Nick can step up and put the strike on the board. Left. 
Another Brooklyn. Well, I think we see that Christian and Nick are the Brooklyn brothers. So they're going to be in the two teens. It's probably not going to be enough, but it'll at least give them a mathematical chance at the end here. There's a nine count, and uh, Christian will take one shot at getting all ten here on the right to give his team a 214. He is taking his sweet time on this shot. It may not be that important in the end, but hey, it's the only shot he's got. So <laughs> that's not what he wanted. So they will take that nine count on the fill ball. So it's a 2-13. And Charlie and Tyrell just need a few pins here, I believe. I think it's something like four pins. We'll uh, add it up after Tyrell throws this ball. He is taking his time setting his feet. He makes it look pretty easy, doesn't it? ball goes through the nose he leaves the three six let's watch his reaction to this as that pin was spinning on the floor he's saying okay come on not to be so that's eight let's see if Charlie well that's enough even if they have to go with the eight that was enough Charlie gets the strike So Charlie will throw the first ball in the 11th. They still have a possible 258. And Christian and Nick are done for the day. Well, another one out the window by Charlie on that left lane. We have seen that. Not just by him, but we've seen it by a number of players today. You get that ball a little bit wide on the right lane, it is not going to recover. Wow, that was just a truck. And so Tyrell will throw one on the left lane. And see if he can close things out with a six-bagger. This is more like the scoring I expected to see today. All right, well, you know, however you do it, it still counts. 258 to 213. That's what I'm talking about. Charlie and Tyrell are moving on. They will face our number two ranked team, Mark and Garrett, next. Valley Bowl, take the Valley Highway or Academy Exit to security.
pretty tough pairing, that Charlie and Tyrell. They ham and egged it about as well as you possibly can and got 10 strikes in firing a 258 and ousting the team of Nick and Christian. So Charlie and Tyrell are moving on to match three to face the team of Mark and Garrett. Now Garrett came over with the group from AMF Woodstock last week when we had five kids from that bowling center join us for Prodigy. And he was the only one that didn't make the show. So he's just glad to be in the top five today. Charlie will lead off. And he just ticks the head pin and leaves the 2-4-8. So he will call on his partner Tyrell to see if he can do a little better. Man, he brings that thing back from downtown, doesn't he? The two pin. And Charlie resets the cluster on the left lane, and he will take the two pin. Goes with his urethane. No, he doesn't. Maybe he should have. He whiffs the two pin. Well, I've said it before. Nothing surprises me anymore. All right, Garrett. First time on Prodigy. Let's see what he can do. Oh, he's running him out. In the first frame, he's running him out. <laughs> well, he's an excitable boy. Let's take a look at this. He takes that backward step like Pete Weber. In good balance. He likes it. Don't use up all your energy too soon. Be my word of advice. All right, Tyrell up on the left. Trying to make amends for that first frame. Crossing over, nine and a wiggle is all he gets. So it'll be up to Charlie then to see if he can atone for his mistake on the right lane a moment ago. There's one in the pocket. This time he goes with his urethane on the first ball. And now we get our first look of the day at Mark, who bowled great during qualifying. He was the third bowler in the field. This time it goes a little high and he leaves the 4-7. Let's see if Garrett can put another strike on the board. I have a feeling they're going to need a few against the pairing of Charlie and Tyrell. Well, that seems to be a popular reaction on the right lane going Brooklyn. So do you want to shoot the 4-7 or do you want to shoot the 6-10? I think for a right-hander, that choice is really pretty simple. I'd go with the two on the left. You're less likely to chop it. And he takes care of it. So it'll be Charlie up on the left lane as he has been leading off in the odd numbered lanes for his team all day. Oh, just a little high, but he trips the four. And he liked that one. So Garrett back up on the left. Oh, 
See if he can repeat the feat that he accomplished in the first frame. Nope, just a little thin. Two, five, eight. So let's see if Mark can put a strike up for the team on the right lane. And that one's wide, so they've got, well, they've got a bit of a dilemma here. You want the two, five, eight? Or you want the one, two, nine? Well, there is one option there, the 258. You could chop it. Or the 129. That's the other option. I think I might go for the 129 myself. And that's what they've decided to do. Oh, but you don't want to hit it on that side. You want to hit the one pin on the right. And so they are open in the third frame. And you don't want to make too many mistakes against Charlie and Tyrell. They will make you pay. And he shreds the rack. And he does it so effortlessly. Tyrell's a big guy, and that ball looks like a marble in his hand. And he is just so effortless in his move up to the line. Mark, hit him thin and watch him spin. There's a shaker. Watch it again, comes in thin, the head pin goes to the wall and mixes them up. They needed it. They're gonna need some more too. Charlie crossing over. And he gets the Brooklyn strike. Boy, we have seen a few of those today. He is back up in the seventh. And goes high, leaving the 6-10. And so it'll be up to Tyrell to keep this string going. So he... And on. Through the nose, and look at this, a five count. And I think we know which one they're gonna shoot. Well, you hear Garrett, he's recommending that they choose to shoot at the three, four, six, seven, ten. but I don't think Charlie and Tyrell are listening. Tyrell will shoot at the spare that Charlie left him, the 6-10. Hear that ball thump, thump, thump as it goes down the lane. It's rolling over the thumb hole. It's hard to believe, but I think Tyrell takes a little off it when he throws that spare ball. He still hooks it some, even though it's a plastic ball. Plastic or urethane, I'm not sure which, but it's one of those balls that doesn't hook. He still manages to bend it some. All right. Garrett up on the left, teams down 53. They need strikes now. Oh, he threw that one pretty good. Just doesn't get the 10 to go. So it'll be up to Mark. Gotta get a string of strikes started. Hope for the best. Could have been a wall shot, but the head pin came off the wall and got the 
four and the seven, but it knocked the four forward. So Garrett has chosen to shoot at the five, the easiest spare in bowling. Oh my goodness. He missed it by six inches. And he can't believe he did that. I bet he hasn't missed a five pin that much since he was a, a prep bowler, which was a few years ago. So, well, 65 pins now. Charlie and Tyrell just stay loose the rest of the way. Try to stay lined up. Well, that's not how you stay lined up. He leaves the 10. Can Charlie put up a strike on the right lane? Yes, he can. So projecting forward, Garrett and Mark have a possible 192. Charlie and Terrell are going to have to open twice. And Garrett and Mark are going to have to strike out. There is the 3-9. If they don't strike here, the best they will be able to shoot is 182. And Charlie and Tyrell can pass that on their next ball. Well, not to be. You want the 3-9 or you want the 2-5? I think they have chosen, or have they chosen? They're still talking about it. Here are the choices, the 3-9, the 2-5. They have chosen the 2-5. And Mark covers it. But that does reduce their possible score to 182. And you see Charlie and Terrell with a 167 and a strike working. They can pass 182 with this ball right here. And that should do it. That would give them 185 in the eighth and 193 in the ninth if they took that eight count and missed it. But there's a strike and that will surely lock it up. That'll be the score they choose to take. So, we see who's moving on to the championship match. Well, Garrett straightened out his line a little bit that time, and I think that might have been where he probably should have been playing the whole game. Leaves the nine. Mark crosses over and just plucks out three, so he will move over to the left lane and shoot at the nine pin that Garrett left him. And they will reset the rack on the right. It'll be Mark's time right here. Oh, it fell off his hand. It fell off his hand, so they are open in the ninth. Doesn't really matter, though. It's just a matter now of how many can Charlie and Tyrell get. There's a ringing 10. We haven't seen that many of those today. See 
seen a couple, but... Watch his reaction. Oh, he thought that was good. Can't believe that didn't strike. I think we've all been there. Charlie finds that Brooklyn zone. So are they going to let Charlie shoot the 10 pin or are they going to take the 5 9? Charlie's lobbying Tyrell. I can make this. He missed one earlier. But he made that one. <laughs> and that's a 10th frame. Because this format is so different, it isn't available in the software that the bowling center has for the overhead score sheets. So we're keeping score by hand, so it's easy to understand why they don't even know it's the 10th frame when it's the 10th frame. Charlie will throw the first ball in the 11th. He's decided to go try another ball. Wants to throw an exploratory shot here in preparation for the championship match. And I'd keep that one, I believe. So a 236 to follow up that 258 that they fired in the previous match. That's pretty good bowling there. Mark hits the Brooklyn side, leaves the 5-9. So Garrett with another chance to put a strike up. He began the match with a strike and got all excited, but he hasn't really done much since. Let's see him finish strong. Well, the super washout is not what he had in mind. So he will move over to the left and take the spare that Mark left him and see if he can put one more spare on the board. That'll give the team another chance at a strike. Or not. Or not. So it's Charlie and Tyrell who are going against Logan and Josh in the championship match next. Prodigy Bowlers Tour presents Legends of the Game. Can you name the player who won the very first PBA tournament ever held? Here's a hint. In the PBA's first season of conducting tournaments, Dick Weber won two of the three tournaments held that first year, and he finished third in the other. But he didn't win the inaugural event. The man who won the PBA's first ever tournament, the 1959 Empire Open in Albany, New York, was not Vince Lombardi, as his photograph might lead you to believe. They did look a lot alike. Nope, the PBA's first titleist was 54 years old when he won it, and to this day stands as the third oldest player to ever win a PBA Tour title. That man was Lou Wrongfoot Campy. He throws. Big one, Lou. Gonna be there. He's in. Lou Campy was born in Verona, Italy, where he was a bocce player as a youth, which accounts for his unorthodox style of bowling, where, as a right-hander, he finished his delivery by sliding on his right foot. In 1947 and 48, Campy paired with Andy Verapapa to win the BPAA Doubles Championship. Then he won it again in 1957 with Lindy Farragelli as his partner. Campy averaged 202 for 715 games in the old All-Star Tournament, the precursor of what has since become known as the U.S. Open. 
That's a phenomenal average for the time when bowlers were rolling rubber balls on wooden lanes with shellac and later lacquer finishes, and 200 games were a rarity. Plus, back then, the All-Star Tournament was a real test of endurance, demanding bowlers to finish 100 games over the course of a week. Don't let his peculiar style fool you, though. Campy could really string the strikes. He was on the highest scoring team in the eastern half of the United States in the 1950s and early 60s. And he made frequent appearances on television, stringing strike after strike, like you see him doing here, bowling a 279 on championship bowling. Listen to Earl Anthony tell of how Lou Campy caused producers of a television series to extend the dates of the show just so they could stay on as long as Campy kept winning. In 1957, an energetic promoter named Lou Marks, along with proprietor Nick Gianos of the Bullmore Recreation in New York City, came up with a novel idea. Sponsored by Sara Lee, a 13-week TV bowling show called East vs. West pitted the top bowlers from the geographical areas against each other. Lists of the top bowlers were drawn, and a 51-year-old named Lou Campy out of Dumont, New Jersey, famed for his wrong foot delivery, was selected to start for the East. The idea was that as bowlers from the respective areas lost, the man next in line would then appear. Campy would have none of that. He proceeded to win 14 straight matches before being stopped in the 15th week by Bill Lillard. The producers had extended the show and would have kept it going as long as Campy kept winning. Of the 14 men Campy defeated, 13 of them went on to be elected to the American Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. Lou Campy, one of the true legends of the game. A couple of mistakes in the middle of the match, just as Charlie and Tyrell were putting together a five-bagger, and things just got a little out of hand for Mark and Garrett, as Charlie and Tyrell register a 236 to 139 victory. So we move to the championship match, pitting the team of Charlie and Tyrell against our number one seeds, Logan and Josh. With as much firepower as we have in this match, don't be surprised if this turns into a strike up on. Although, I have to say, we haven't really had any super close matches today. It has been entertaining, though. Charlie leading off again. Oh, that little shaker didn't quite shake and bake the way he had hoped. Head pin went to the wall, but instead of coming back and taking out the four, it went up and around. So it's up to Tyrell to get this team started off with a strike. But the messenger just misses the 10. So once again, the ball is in Charlie's hands to convert the 10 pin. Yeah, he kind of wanted that one. Bowlers know it when it comes off their hand if they threw it good, and he knew he threw that one good. And they are celebrating Charlie making a 10 pin. Watch his reaction to this. He's running them out, running out 10 pins now. All right, this is the first time you've seen Josh on the show. This kid can really rev it up. Good ball to start. Just hooks a little high, a four pin. And now his partner, Logan, who has been on a streak lately. Third week in a row, he qualified in the number one position. Going with his urethane, playing down and in today. I think that's the smart play. Keep everything in front of you.
So Tyrell moving over to the left lane, leading off in the second. Left off his hand. And the 3 6. But they get a second try at a strike. See if Charlie can deliver right here. Oh, just a little bit high. Tripped out the four. Had the four nine standing, but they will pass on the three six and Tyrell will shoot at the nine. Going with his spare ball. And takes care of the nine pin. All right. Logan will lead off for his team in the second frame. And I got to tell you, in the warm ups, Logan was lost. That one doesn't come up, and he's got the 1, 2, 4, 10 washout. And we'll keep his fingers crossed that Josh can do better. These two lanes seem to be playing rather different. Left lane's hanging, right lane is hooking off the world. Look at that. Even Josh goes Brooklyn on the right side. But that's a double for them. And that's a good way to start, especially against this pair. If Charlie and Tyrell, they will throw some strikes at you before it's over. I have a feeling. Well. That's not the way they would want to throw the strikes, but it counts the same as a good one. Charlie crossing over, gets that Brooklyn, and we'll see. Yes, he gives it the left-hander's move. All right, Josh up on the left. And we have a balk. We have a balk. We go to the uh, first base umpire, and uh, yes, he's calling a balk. And Josh finds that hang spot on the left lane. You just can't get it there. Nobody's been able to bring it back from there yet. And Logan pulls it, pulls it off the edge of the earth. And now they've got a little bit of a dilemma, but I think it's one they can decide on pretty quickly. Do you want the 110, the naked washout? Probably not. I think I'd take this, the 136. Throw it just like a strike. Put it between the one and three. That's been difficult today, though. He almost hooked too high to get it, but he covers the one, three, six. So we've got us a close match, about what I expected. Tyrell will lead off in the fourth. Strike here would give his team the lead. And that is perfect. Right in the one three pocket. And they all disappear. So now Logan will move over to the left lane to throw the first ball in the fourth for his team.
Oh, it drifts a little high, and how did he get those to go? Watch this, watch the two pin. Oh, it's not the two pin, it's the head pin that came back off of something. I don't know how that happened. Charlie hooks through the nose and leaves the three six. And so Tyrell can extend their lead to 12 if he can put another strike on the board right here. And he does. I guarantee you this pair of Charlie and Tyrell won't go down without a fight. But neither will Josh and Logan. Josh shot 276 his first game of league this morning. First game he ever bowled in this house. And he mixes them up there. Now I say the first game he ever bowled in this house. He's probably bowled tournaments here before, but he came to try out our league this morning and the very first game he started with a nine bagger. And there were a couple of those light shakers so the lead is back to two for Charlie and Tyrell left but a Brooklyn well that left lane is touchy you get it too far to the right it stays right you miss a little left and it goes left and if you get lucky, you can trip the six and get a strike. And that extends the lead back to 12. Josh and Logan need to keep striking just to keep pace with Charlie and Tyrell. Logan up on 39. That's left. Oh, not quite. We almost saw another Brooklyn. Watch this. This is going to get so far, Brooklyn, he sends everything over to the right. And the 10 is just laughing at him. But his partner takes care of it. Josh with another mixer. And the lead is back to just two pins. And Charlie up in the seventh frame. High. And the 310 baby split. So Tyrell will try to make it a five bagger here. Oh, it's wide. And so they're left with a choice between the 310 or the two pin. Charlie missed a two pin earlier. Surely he won't do that twice. He threw the same ball, too. But he gets it. So that's a spare. And that shaves the lead down to just one pin. One pin separating these two teams right now. With Josh up on the left, trying to take the lead. And he gets a strike, and Josh and Logan move up by nine pins now. Here it is again, comes in light. And that head pin goes to the wall and just takes the heads off of the four, seven, and eight. So now Charlie and Tyrell need to get a little string going again.
Well, that's how you get it started. That is how you get it started. What has happened to these lanes in the last 10 minutes? Uh, different players are bowling on them, I think, is the answer to that question. And Logan, right up the track and right in the hole. And now the lead is 19. But Charlie can cut it to nine if he can catch a double for his team right here. And he does. So it looks like we're going to go down to the 10th frame in this match. And Josh will try to get that foundation strike right here. Most importantly, if he strikes here, his team can't get shut out in the 10th. And that's what he gets is a strike in the ninth, and the lead moves out to 19 pins now. And Charlie and Tyrell are going to need to dig deep. Cuts that one short and leaves a split. They still have a possible 258. Josh and Logan, a possible 277. Oh, man, he threw that one good. Watch this one again. Oh, he can't believe that didn't strike. And look at here. We have another situation. This is what happened. Watch this. He leaves the ring in 10, but the pin setter swept it off. So as we have said so many times in the past on Prodigy, this is unofficial, informal, and impromptu competition, non-sanctioned. So Tyrell, rather than shooting the 10 pin on the right, we have told him, you make the 10 pin out of this spare on the left, we'll give you a spare. And we'll leave it to the judges to decide if there's some question. Yeah, I don't know, what do the judges say? They're giving it to him. Okay, so we're giving him a spare. Not sure how that happened. I think I would have uh, given the thumbs down on that one, but we're giving them a spare. One of the quirky things about Prodigy Bowlers Tour is we don't always follow the rules. If this were sanctioned competition, you would, of course, have the 10-pin reset, but hey, we're here to have fun. Charlie in the 11th. And that's a five count. That's the one, two, four, eight, ten. So, surely Tyrell can do better than a five count. That would be my advice. Get more than five. But he doesn't listen to me. So they're going to settle for a five count on the fill ball. Well, that's what they get for that questionable spare. Uh huh. So a 232. It still really doesn't matter much. Josh and Logan with a 187 in the seventh and a double working and a 25 pin lead. They just need a few pins, and this is going to be wrapped up. Logan will do the honors. Brooklyn, and another strike. Well, it's fitting. 
that the championship would be decided on a Brooklyn strike. We had a few of those today, but here it is. This was the winning ball. And the 5-9 go out late. It wasn't pretty, but it was a strike. Josh will throw the first ball in the 11th. And he puts another one up, so they are in the 270s. And if they can get one more strike, it'll be 277 to finish. I don't know about this one. Logan sends it into the weeds. And so Josh will throw the final ball of the game. A strike for 277. And another Brooklyn. Well, Josh, who started the day with a 276, his first game in league this morning finishes the day winning on Prodigy Bowlers Tour with a 277. And when we return, you will see Logan and Josh sign the coveted trophy pin. Now, bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your bowling center with Prodigy Bowlers Tour t-shirts and sportswear, including collared shirts with the Prodigy logo printed on the back to show that you support junior bowling. Check out the entire assortment of Prodigy t-shirts in the Brownswick store. Visit prodigybowlerstour.com to see the selection. See the Ash Gray Celebrating Junior Bowling Elevating Junior Bowlers t-shirt or the Who Will Win the Coveted Trophy Pin t-shirt. Or maybe you'd want the one that says, I've come to get my bowl on, right on the front of the shirt. Or simply, bowl me. There's a t-shirt that says, bowling. You probably don't get it because it's mainly for smart people. And if you're a proud parent with a junior bowler, we've got a t-shirt just for you. And how about this t-shirt? You're bowling an eighth grader. Prepare to meet defeat. Available in grades one through nine, most in both adult and kid sizes. And finally, the shirt that reads, bowl better, have more fun, take lessons. Then maybe you can keep up with me. The Brownswick store is powered by the people at Cafe Press. And all of these shirts are available right now. Just go to prodigybowlerstour.com and click on the link to be taken right to the store. PayPal and credit cards accepted. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. Get your bowl on and bring the spirit of Prodigy Bowlers Tour to your house. Order now. Go to prodigybowlerstour.com. That's prodigybowlerstour.com. A 277 to 232 victory for Logan and Josh over two very worthy opponents in Charlie and Tyrell put an exclamation point at the end of our first ever Best Ball Doubles Championship on Prodigy Bowlers Tour. A pretty interesting format, and we have Mr. Bowling Don Carter to thank for it. And now that our winners have left their mark on the lanes today, it's time they leave their marks on the coveted trophy pin. Well, congratulations. This is your first time at the ceremonial pin signing. You get to put your name on it and date it. Today is 10-14-2017. And this guy now gets to put his name on there for a second time, joining McFluffy as a two-time winner this year. came over here today for the first time. You decided to try out our league today. 
Did you have any fun? I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Really we hope that. to see you back again. Yeah. No, we know we'll see you again. That's for sure. You did it again. Yep. You kind of uh, had a pretty good partner here too. Yeah, no, I, I didn't really do much, but I had a couple of really horrible strikes in there though. Yeah, you guys bowled great. Congratulations. That was 277 the last game. Nice going. See you next time.